Hi there. I wanted to give you a quick demo of the power of distributed computation caching, which is a bit of a fancy term for making your builds really, really fast. And by builds, I mean builds on your CI or builds on your developer machines. And I'm filming all of this live on purpose because I want you to see I'm using two completely separate machines. And you'll see in a bit why this is important. So let me bring the camera close to the first screen. Don't worry too much if you can't make out the details or the text. I'll do a proper screen recording in the second part of the video where I'll explain exactly what's going on. Just enjoy the demo for now. I have here a Git repository which contains two React apps. And each app is importing 30 components and each one of those components is importing 30 other components. So across the two apps, that's 1800 separate components that have to be built and tested in this one repository. So it's kind of big, but you have enterprise projects which can get much bigger. And while I am using React for this specific video, what I'm going to talk about applies to any front-end or back-end JavaScript or TypeScript project that you can build, test, or lint, be it Angular, Next.js, Node, or even Express. Now I'll copy the GitHub URL, go to my terminal, and clone it locally. I'll cd into the folder, and then trigger a yarn or npm install. And now I'll do a build of both of the React apps by calling yarn build all. But before I press enter, I'll add a timer here so you can see exactly how long this takes as I will be speeding up the video. I'll trigger the build and start the timer. Okay, so that took a bit over a minute and 10 seconds. Not bad, let's try again with the tests. I'll reset the timer and trigger yarn test all and then start the timer again. Wow, so that took much longer, almost nine minutes to run the tests for all of the components in the app. And we can check the results of the operations we just ran. If I open up VS Code, we have a dist folder here from our build with all the artifacts for our two React apps ready to be pushed to our users. And down here, we have this just output file with all the testing output. It's really long, almost 3,000 lines, but we can consider it proof that all the tests ran. Now let's do the exact same steps on this other laptop. This is a much slower laptop. It's the same exact GitHub link. I'll clone it in the terminal, cd into the folder, and do a yarn or npm install. And while that's happening, I'll add a clock here so you can keep an eye on the time again. And now I'll trigger the same build command to build all of the apps and start the timer. And it's done? I didn't have time to speed up the video at all now. Did something go wrong with the build command? Let's check. I'll open up VS Code. Remember, we just did a completely fresh clone of just the repository. But after running the build, we have this dist folder here with the output of both of our React apps that's ready to be pushed to Netlify and get to the user. So the build seems to have been successful because all the output is here. Weird, let me close this and let's try again with the tests. That should definitely take much longer. I'll trigger the command and start the timer. And it only took 25 seconds to run the tests on this laptop. And this is the much slower laptop. I'll take the timer away and open VS Code. Let's check if the output file is here. And yep, it was created. And it seems to have all the 3000 lines of output in here. This wasn't there before because we just cloned the repository. So the tests ran successfully as well. So we just got the same exact results on both laptops from running the build and the tests. Same output in the terminal and same files generated. But while it took over 10 minutes to run the build and the tests on the first laptop, we did it in less than 35 seconds on this much slower laptop. Let's look at exactly why that happened and how you can enable it for your project. Let's look at this function. You might have seen it before. You give it an input and it calculates the nth Fibonacci number. It's a simple function, but it still has to use a lot of CPU cycles to give us back a result. 
And we notice that the final result of this function only depends on this input. If you keep passing in the same input, it will always return the same output. We call this a pure function. And this guarantee that it gives us is really powerful because it allows us to optimize it. So let's say we run it with input 100. The first time we run it, we have no idea what its return value is going to be. So we wait for it to do the work. But once we have a return value, we put it to the side. For this input, we will always get this output. Let's run it again for a different number. Again, we do the work, but we store the result here. But now, someone wants to run this function again with input 100. So instead of running the whole calculation all over again, we can check, hmm, did we ever run it again with input 100? Yes, we have. So there's no point in doing all of this work again, because we know it's just going to produce this output. So we can just return it directly. If I close this and we go back to our example app, you can imagine two inputs to our function. One is the name of the command we want to run, like test or build. And the second one is the source code needed for those commands to run. So if I trigger this, we skipped over it, but you can see it took over 20 seconds to run. And going back to our example, our function output is whatever was written to the terminal after running the command and the artifacts it generated, the deployable assets in case of the build. Anytime we run build or test with the same source, we'll get the exact same terminal output and artifacts generated. So if we start caching those values, like we did for the function, we can just replay them back to the developer. And from their perspective, it will look like the build command ran as normal, but much quicker. So you can see this time, it took just a bit over a second, even though I ran the exact same command. And that's because we didn't actually do any of the work involved in building or testing the projects. We're just pulling a previous result from the cache. So how do we enable this mechanism? Well, the project we're in is a monorepo, a repo containing multiple apps, and a lot of other well-encapsulated libs down here. The main apps that get deployed to the user import some of these libs down here. We also use a completely free and open source tool called NX to manage this repository. NX has a lot of features that make different teams work efficiently within the same repository. For example, you can generate a whole React application with just a simple command. You can also automatically generate storybook stories for your component libraries, with Cypress end-to-end -end tests for each one. No manual setup required at all. This command does it all. And even view your whole dependency graph, which is a bit crazy for this uh, demo app I'm using. But one specific feature that it has built in is local computation caching. So let's try it with running the linter now. I've been using yarn test or yarn build before, but under the hood, it actually invoked the NX CLI. So let's just use that. I'll lint React App 1. And we can see that took around 27 seconds to run. And we talked about the cache. Where does NX store the cache? Well, if you look inside node modules, there's a cache folder in here. And that's where we store all of those cached outputs. And if I run the same lint command again on the same source code, we can see that now we got cached output back and the command actually took only two seconds. Now, if I change something in React App 1, let's say I add a console log in main.tsx and then try to run the linter again, it will go through the full computation and run the full lint command again because it can't really be sure how our change might have affected the linting output. So that's why it invalidated the cache. NX also allows you to generate these libs here with very simple commands. And this is super important for computation caching. The more you separate your code into well-encapsulated units, the easier it is to get a cache hit. For example, imagine having all of your code into this one app up here. Anytime we change anything in any of its files, we'll need to invalidate the whole cache because we don't know what impact our change might have had to that application versus extracting functionality from the app and putting it into these small focused libs. Then if we change one of the libs, we just have to rebuild or retest or relint just that one specific lib. 
Everything else can just be pulled from the cache. So just by using NX, the open source tool, you'll notice running commands in your project become much faster. But in our demo, we pulled a completely fresh repository on our second laptop, but it's still built immediately. How did it do that without building up a local cache beforehand? Another advantage of NX is that it allows you to install add-ons. One add-on we can install is the Narwhal NX Cloud Distributed Caching plugin. Once that's installed, we can apply it to our project using a simple command. This will enable NX Cloud for us, and it will also create a secret token for us inside the nx.json file that we can check in and share with the rest of our team. Anybody with this token will be able to download and write to the same common shared cache. And that's all there is. Add the cloud plugin, initialize it in the repository, and check in this file to share with your team. We've now enabled distributed computation caching. Developers can continue working as normal and running the same commands they usually run, but if Anna runs build or test on a lib and it takes her, let's say, 30 seconds, the results of that computation will get pushed to the cloud cache. If then a few minutes later, Kim runs the same build or test command on the same lib on a totally different computer, she will just reuse Anna's output, making the command seem almost instant and not have to waste time or duplicate computing resources. This has major implications for CI as well. As developer changes get merged into master, CI picks them up for building, linting, unit, or end-to-end -end testing. But those changes that CI is busy computing away will likely have already been built by the developer that made the change, which would have sent them to the cloud cache. So CI can just pull that output directly from the shared cache, drastically reducing computation times. And there might be cases where changes from multiple developers on the same libraries get merged directly on master. So CI might need to build those from scratch, but that will ensure that the latest snapshot of master is always up to date and built, tested, and linted. So when a team of five, 10, 20 developers pulls latest on master when they come into work in the morning and they build test or lint locally, they will almost instantly get results back from the cache. So not only developers will start sharing the cache and saving each other time, but they're also gonna work together with CI to save everyone time. If you want to try this out, check out the description of the video for a link to the NX repository I used. You'll then need to run the NX cloud commands I mentioned to generate a token. Then just try it out with some colleagues on different machines to see the benefits. I've also skipped over a lot of details of how distributed computation caching works. So I'll link to some articles in the description that cover that in depth. And definitely check out nx.app and nx.dev for in-depth guides on everything we talked about, including written tutorials on how to get started.